Welcome to the Waste Not What Not podcast. I'm Philippa Ross, human ecologist, enthusiologist, author and energy healer, bringing you inspirational interviews, news and tips to rebuild the relationship between people and the planet the way nature intended by revitalizing our natural resources, minimizing waste and maximizing human potential. I trust you'll discover seeds of hope for a vibrant future so you can cultivate and transform them to suit your own lifestyle in order for us to collectively create a world where reverence for the diversity of all life is honoured. You'll find all the show notes in the description and lots more about me and my work at philipparos.com. And don't forget, if you like what you hear, be sure to share far and wide. Hello Waste Busters, welcome to episode 45. Here in New Zealand we've just had Labour Weekend, which for me is the limbering up period prior to the summer and Christmas season. Physical and mental layers begin to peel off as we embrace the lighter, brighter, longer days. I love throwing open all the doors and windows and working outside on the deck as opposed to being cooped up inside. There's nothing like being serenaded by the birds as one's fingers dance across the keyboard. Globally, we're all consciously or unconsciously still feeling the lasting effects of the new moon energy from a couple of days ago. The more attention I pay to the natural cycles of life, the more I notice fluctuating patterns of behaviour and thoughts that wax and wane at the same time as the moon. And serendipitously, I had a great conversation with someone this week about signs and symbols that signify the right timing for something new, whether it's launching a new venture or exploring new avenues in life. So slow down and see if you notice any clues for yourself. My guest today, Delphine de Rouvroy, provides a fascinating insight into some of the everyday subtle signs the universe gives us, which more often than not go unnoticed, until such time as the bottom of our world literally falls out. Intrigued? All will be revealed in her interview later. I definitely think the increasing number of whales beaching around the world is a sign from the deep to pay more reverence to our ocean. In the last week, 30 right whales, a sea lion and many Magellanic penguins and seabirds were found washed up on the shores of the Argentinian peninsula, all intoxicated by algae in the region. I'm hoping delegates at the Kemla meeting in Tasmania are tuning in to the need for marine protection in the area. While we're talking ocean conservation, I'm glad to hear the New Zealand government have announced they're backing a global moratorium on deep sea mining because of the huge environmental and scientific concerns about the potential devastating impact it could have. I'm also encouraged by news that the Waimati District Council returned the consent application for the waste energy plant submitted by South Island Recovery Resource Limited because it was incomplete, missing fundamental information relating to the scale and potential effects of their proposal. More specifically, cultural values, groundwater, surface water, air quality, stormwater discharge and odour. Pretty bloody major impacts, eh? How they think they could get away with it is beyond me. And as I'm talking about wise waste decisions, I've just discovered a great nationwide competition called the Wise Waste Challenge to bring people together at work and their communities to come up with innovative, fun ways to encourage conscious decisions to reduce levels of waste. You can register your interest by Monday the 31st of October and then ensure you submit your entry by the 25th of November. There's links in the show notes. Now on to this week's guest, Delphine de Rufoy, who shares how the ancient Mayan abdominal massage modality, known as the Arvigo technique, turned her life around. Now a practitioner herself, she explains how connecting to the sacred space of the uterus can empower women, strengthening the relationship they have to themselves, boosting their confidence and restoring the balance of physical, mental, emotional and spiritual health. Welcome to the show, Delphine. It's absolutely lovely to have you with me. Good Thank you, Philippa. We meet very early on a Thursday morning at Toastmasters, and I had the privilege of hearing your story last week. And you were telling us how the uterus is the center of the woman's body. And you have an amazing story about your journey as to how you came to connect with the uterus and the importance that it's played in your life. Can you enlighten the listeners as to your story? Yes. So for me, what I learned 10 years ago is through Don Elirio Panta, who is a shaman in Guatemala. 
I learned that the uterus is the woman's center. And if she's out of balance, the woman's life will be out of balance. So spiritually, psychologically, emotionally. And of course, I will tell you my story about how I discover my uterus, but I did not know that. I am a woman. I am 54 years old. I had five kids. I knew exactly how to create babies, how to deliver, how to educate children. But I did not know the role of the uterus. I did not know that it was really my center, my cup, my me, my identity. So I did not know that. So through my story that I will tell you later, I really discovered the power of that. And by realigning my uterus in the body for a massage that I'm going to speak about, every symptom that I had improved. In what way? So 10 years ago, okay, I'm French, as you can hear. Uh, I arrived in New Zealand with my family with a tourist visa. And through, uh, at this time, we could have a long-term business visa to start uh, working in New Zealand. And we, we bought a cafe. And I stay at the cafe for four years. And after two years, I could feel one day that I had like an egg between my legs through my vagina coming down. So I say, I think I have a prolapse. I did not understand why, because I did all the physiotherapy that I could after the delivery. I had good delivery, no problem during my pregnancies. And I found out that I was so stressed. I was so completely cut into, I couldn't feel my body. I was like, I have the bottom and the top. And during these two years of stress, I was not supported, not by my family, I was, but for me, it was too much. The too mm -hmm. much was, uh, got me to the prolapse. So everything went down. I was overwhelmed. I was stuck. I was separate. I was not okay. Very stressed, very stressed out for the first time of my life. Plus, I have the visa on my shoulder for the whole family. And this was not usual. So the prolapse came, and then I met a beautiful lady. I don't remember how, but I met her, Samar. Samar, who lives in Auckland, who is my mentor. <laughs> and I took an appointment with her to get this Arvigo massage. And this Arvigo massage, it's a massage teach by the Maya people of Central America in Belize near Guatemala. And there was a shaman, Don Eligio Panti, who was in the jungle every day, completely linked to nature, to the plants, who did this massage to all the people that he met. And it's a belly massage, external massage that you can do with your hand, abdominal, digestive massage. Through this massage, you can move your uterus and you can realign all the organs around the uterus. Wow. By moving them, you can restore the balance of the belly and you can improve the circulation of the lymph, of the veins, because you know that in the belly, we have all the emotional, physical congestion in it. We hold all the patterns, emotional, traumas, everything. And then by moving it with your hands, you can really improve the symptoms. So she did it. She taught me that the uterus was my center yeah. and that it was the only organ that we could move with our hands and that can move in a space like a big uh, Grape. yeah, grapefruit. So we have a grapefruit and the uterus is inside. Of course, it grows with the menses, yeah, with the babies. Of course, it grows a lot, but we can move it. So by moving it, we move all the organs around. So this was completely incredible. Three months after, so of course, she taught me how to do it. And three months after, I didn't have any more eggs out of my vagina. Wow. This was completely incredible. I was constipated during all my life. And by doing the massage every day, my constipation improved a lot. This was really the beginning of my discovery of the uterus. Mm. For me, the uterus is everything. It's not only an organ where you create baby. It's not only an organ or a link to the vagina, through that you can have sex. No, it's more than that. It's very powerful. Because and when I just, realign it, I felt better. Is it just associated with women? Well, the uterus is associated with women, but I can do this massage also for men with a prostate, but the prostate cannot move. The prostate is under the bladder, but by doing exactly the same gesture, where there is a little 
modification to do, we can improve also the symptoms for the prolapse. But the prostate, sorry, is exactly the same for men. Wow. Yeah. And of course, I have less men uh, because it's very taboo for them. And for them, they think that the prostate is very important. But when they are more than 50 years old, but before 50, they don't want to take care of it. Yeah. But it's yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. And I remember you saying about a lot of symptoms or should I say aches and pains and problems that women have that we think are just something that we have to endure. But actually, through the massage, you can improve people's health, like period pains and irritable bowel and that kind of thing. Can you extend that? Yeah. Yeah. So imagine the uterus is moving. Okay. When you have a trauma accident, for example, when you slide, when you fall down from a chair, when you fall down from a bike, ski, or whatever, okay? Yeah. Your pelvic moves. There is a movement. So your uterus moves. So it can go on the front, it can go on the back, on the right, and on the left. And if you don't touch it, if you don't massage it, it will stay this way. So mm-hmm. imagine 20 years after, all the organs, the fascia, the muscles go around the uterus, and perhaps you will have pain on your hip, Perhaps you will have your period very painful. Perhaps you will have more bladder infection because the uterus is pushing the bladder. Perhaps you will have painful intercourse. Perhaps you will have a lot of menopause issue. Uh, As you say, uh, irritable bowel syndrome, stomach congestion, diarrhea. So because it's moving through the pelvic, so it's not only the uterus, of course, all your pelvic is in the middle of your body. So traumas, accident, car accident, shock, of course, emotional trauma, uh, abortion, physical trauma, uh, surgery, lineage, wound that we have, everything is in the belly, okay? So by touching physically your body with your hand, by feeling your uterus, by visualizing your uterus, and by feeling the energy of your pelvic, by dancing with your pelvic, moving the pelvic, you know, it's very important. You will improve the circulation of the blood. You will put more blood in this pelvic. We are quite stuck, you know, we sit a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't dance, we don't move the pelvic. I think, you know, when I cook, sometimes I move the bottom just to move. In France, we always learn to tense the perineum, you know, after babies, you know, to, to stop, to, to tense the body. Okay. But it's the opposite. We have to put flow in it. We have to put energy in it. And by the visualization also, it helps a lot. I've always known about the mind-body link, but it's such a profound example of how the body talks to us. It's absolutely incredible. And you talking about how you felt separate and metaphorically, you know, with the prolapse, and it was like how disconnected and how basically your world was moving out of your body. You just couldn't. Mm. It's just incredible, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Imagine your uterus is your house. Your pelvic is your house. Your body is a house. So you have your house in the house. Your pelvic floor, so the perineum, you know, the base of everything. Your safety, security. Everything dropped down. Yeah. I was not safe. I had a visa, but the goal was to keep the visa. I had to have this result. So everything was stressful. And then my floor, the floor of my house collapsed. It's not only an image. It's a very symbolic uh, meaning for me. Every symptom has a meaning. So everything collapsed. Mm. <laughs> and it was physically, it collapsed. Yep. I was so stressed, so focused on the, on the result. And I learned really to go inside me, to love myself, to listen to my body. I knew how to listen to my body before, but this stress was completely too much for me. Yeah. For me, everything has a meaning, everything. The body talks every time, yeah. every time. And the sacred place is there. And the ovaries also, they, they have a, a big meaning for me. They are the source of the creativity. Yeah. And when I say ovary or uterus, if you don't have any more your uterus, it's the same. I can do the massage. You can do the massage because the energy is there. So if you have yeah. a hysterectomy, yeah. 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 Wow. The energy of the, the organ is always in your body. We are not only a physical body. 
when you hear of people who've had amputations and things, they still feel yeah. the energy of the, the missing limb or whatever. So as you yeah. say, it is an energetic blueprint or something. So can yeah. people learn to do this for themselves? Because it sounded like you did. Yes. So the first session I did was a two-hour session where Samar explained me uh, different tools, also natural tools, steaming, vagina steaming, castor oil pack, you know, all the natural way, holistic way to take care of yourself and all of your, you know, the pelvic. And then I learned that the uterus was moving in this pocket and then she teach me how to do the massage. And I do exactly the same for people by Zoom or so, even if the people are very far from me. So oh. they can do by themselves. The thing is, women have to do by themselves this massage because yeah. it's very simple. And by taking care of their belly, by touching the belly, because a lot of women don't want to touch their belly because there is so many taboos on it, you know, intimacy is very taboo. And by touching it, you try to connect, you try to connect to yourself also. And really, when you do this massage, you meet your uterus, you can feel it. And we never learn how to do that. Mm. I had five kids, went to the doctor many times, didn't know where it was. Mm. On the right, on the left, in the middle, never, never. It's not something that we learn. No. So you learn, you meet your uterus. I met my uterus. She has a name. I met her. I could see a tree. She came to me. I met my uterus. And when I do this massage, uh, some women discover their uterus. It's very emotional. Your experience of doing was also through a meditation, which is how you met your uterus, isn't it? Tell the story of that because you're a great <laughs> wordsmith and I was so excited for you when you explained. Yeah, so during the massage, of course, you do the abdominal massage. So you touch the belly on the top and then you do another movement through the pubic bone and then you find the uterus. So so you know where she is on the right, on the left. And then after that, Samar made a beautiful meditation where you have to visualize the uterus when you go into it. And then I had a vision. And the vision was that I saw a big tree, so grounded, so beautiful, with a big hole on it. And the little girl, Heidi, you know Heidi? Heidi in the mountains, I don't know in English. Yeah, the <laughs> book or the movie, if you have the book yeah. or the movie. Yeah. Heidi came out. I don't know why it was Heidi, but Heidi came out to explain me, wow, Delphine, this is you. You have to go out of the tree. You know, this is your identity. And Heidi came. And because you know that I love words and double meaning, Heidi mean in English, ID, identity card. And I was completely overwhelmed. I cried. I had so much emotion and joy because my uterus, Heidi, told me, Delphine, it's your identity. It's you. If you don't take care of me, you know, I will stay in the tree. And the tree was so big, so huge, so grounded that I understood in one vision that I had to first learn how to connect with Heidi. And then after, okay, 10 years after, I really have other visions, of course. And I really want to teach, to show to women that everything is possible, that they can connect in two seconds to their uterus and be themselves, be aligned. Be the goddess and not be hidden. I yeah, think it's it was... very empowering to have a tool because myself as a mentor as well, I mean, ultimately, it's to empower people to do things for themselves. And to me, someone mm. who has a healing gift or a way of facilitating change and improving things, the greatest gift we can do is to give techniques or strategies to people to actually help themselves. And this is where yeah. it's beautiful what you're doing because we can. And I love the fact that, you know, you can do it on a one-on-one -on -one mm. in person or via Zoom. So that's extraordinary. So yeah. you can go worldwide. That's yeah. amazing. Wow. Yeah, yeah, they do. They do by themselves. Of course, they are in their room, on their bed. It's very safe. It's covered. I have to, to check the movement so they can do by themselves after. They can ask me questions. And of course, I teach them how to do vagina steam. It's only water, plants, castor oil pack, very simple tools that we don't know, that only the tribes know, mm. that only the, the people a long time ago and all the women did in South America a lot, in Africa a lot. Very simple ways of healing instead of trusting always the outside 
trusting always the doctors. I don't say that doctors are not good. Surgery are very good, but you can avoid sometimes big surgery thanks to that. I think if I had followed the doctors, I would have have had the surgery. Yeah. And 10 years after, I don't need. Mm. I backpacked for 10 months with a big backpack, didn't have any trouble. So it's inside. It was just a message. Delphine, get up, get up and go inside. Yeah. Don't seek validation outside yourself. Go into your body. Trust your body. We have a wonderful body, really. But as you say, we don't really know our bodies. And I can remember doing a pelvic floor exercise class for about eight weeks alongside my daughter. And there was probably about 10 people in the class. And I would say two thirds of that class, and they were all about 30. So I was like twice everybody's age. And two thirds of this class had suffered a prolapse. And I was Mm. absolutely astounded. And other people with urine leakage and that kind of thing. And it was heartbreaking to feel that these women were enduring these problems and there didn't seem to be a way to solve it. And it's connecting to ourselves and really understanding the message that the body is giving us and how we can help ourselves. I think it's extraordinary. Yeah. I have an example. I had an American lady. She was young. She was 30 years old, had her first baby. The baby was four months old and she had a big prolapse and she was a nurse. So standing Mm. up a lot, she couldn't stand up. So a big prolapse. Also, the bladder was leaking. I said, oh, did you move a lot? Because uh, the bladder symbol is really, when it's leaky, it's about the territory, about being able to say no, to say yes. You know, it's like the dog peeing around the tree you know they just say okay this is my zone don't oh, come okay so right. when we yeah. leak it's really about territory who came into my territory okay or who i let in my territory so it's it's just okay keeping my distance being able to say yes being able to say no to people in a in a nice way of course i just ask her but did you move she said yes i moved four times in four months wow. okay she was a single mom so Okay, so I couldn't understand our trauma about the leaking. And then I, after a while, I spoke about the pelvic floor, the floor, the house. And then she told me, Delphine, I am renting a house and my bedroom has got a floor and it's collapsing. <gasps> the floor was completely collapsing. Oh, so, my goodness. You know, the double meaning is very important. So what happened also in your life? Okay, first, you have to ask you this question. What was a trauma just before the prolapse? For me, it was very clear. Yeah. Stressed into a, a prison, a cafe. I couldn't be free. It was the first time. So for her, she wow. moved a lot. She was single mom, no money, everything collapsed. And the bedroom had wow. a wooden floor, completely broken. Yeah. So I said, okay, first fix the floor. She told me four months after that the owner fixed the floor. And then after, yeah, do your job at the same time. Wow. You know the symbolism? Mm. It's not only physical. No. Absolutely. And then again, I think it's an amazing story to help people just broaden the mind and become more aware of the synchronicities, the stories, how things align. There are great metaphors in life and we're so busy, busy, chop, chop, getting on and we're oblivious to what's happening. So it's fantastic. Yeah. To say about the 30 years old woman who have more and more prolapse, it's because, yeah, they are super woman, very yeah. quick. They don't stay, I don't know, two months, three months, sometime after the delivery. They don't calm down. Yeah. It's just about, yeah, taking care of yourself, taking yeah. time and having a balance in your life also helps a lot. So, yeah, mm. more and more women have this issue. The pills doesn't help also. I don't say that it's easy for women not to have pills, but the pills doesn't help for the endometriosis problem, for example. There is a lot of things. The food, if we don't eat good food or so, it doesn't help. So it's just the balance of everything. Mm. And it's trusting your body. Mm. We don't know our body. Trusting. Trusting ourselves. Not trusting the outside. Always, always. It's, as you say, it's even with our own children. You can go to somebody for advice or something, but it's often ignored or, as I said at the beginning, a lot of people think that it's just normal and something that they have to endure. And actually, it's not. It's just really about tuning into the body and 
you're really excited about the subject, I know. How has it improved your own life in the last 10 years? Uh, alignment, no fear, being myself. I don't give a fuck about the advice of people. <laughs> I don't seek validation. Yeah. I am myself more than ever. I am free. I trust myself. And if I fail, it's okay. You know, I don't criticize myself or whatever. You know, I am wise. I am a goddess. I am a goddess. I am the goddess of oneness. And if I have doubt about myself, I come back to my uterus. I imagine myself in an armchair with a big light crown. And yes, we are all goddesses. We are all queens. I think it's the way to be. So yes. I am more like that since 10 years, completely out of seeking validation. This is something that I did a lot, seeking validation, comparing myself with others. Now I do what I can with all my love, all my power to help people. And I just put a seed on the path of everybody I meet if I can. Because as you say, I don't like to see people suffering and women suffering. I cannot And I belong to a family of girls. I have only daughters. So I think it was my mission to do that also. And meeting people who don't know anything about the baby, who don't know the names, who cannot pronounce the name vulva. Yeah. Only this name. Yeah. Makes me cry. Because this is the first step to connect. It's just to say the words. Yeah. Vulva. Vagina. Uterus. Because it's very foggy for us, for women, because we don't see our sex. So it starts like that. It's not the fault of our parents. It's just education. and We don't see. Well, it's just we don't social see. dynamics. I mean, in the, it's, as you say, it's been comfortable saying the words. And it is very much a taboo thing. You know, sex is just sex for sex sake. Yeah. And it's actually, the body is a very sacred temple And you don't have to be all woo-woo about it. It's just recognizing how incredible it is. It's not a machine. It is an Mm. interactive ball of energy. And it's talking to us all the time. But we're so busy doing and proving. And as you say, the gift of knowing your body has given you so Mm. much more than just physical health because it's empowered you in so many ways, hasn't it? Exactly. It's not only physical. Mm. It's a lot more. And then when you connect, you attract synchronicity. You attract the good people or you attract the experience you need to have. Sometimes it's not funny, but sometimes it's good. And for me, because I I love words, I have some words coming up through cars, through signs, through people. So yeah, it comes like that. But for other people, it could be vision, it could be interaction with other I don't know it, it depends feeling mm. yeah I think when you are yourself and happy and positive you vibrate and you attract the vibration that you need to grow for me it's really like that before this event of course I was in this personal development of growing being a better mom and doing coaching and all this stuff but Feeling the uterus was really the beginning of the, uh, as you say, the temple. Yeah, It's like the climax, hey? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. When I ask a woman, where is your uterus? You know, in a house. Draw yep. your uterus. Yep. You know where she draws it? Kitchen. On a cave? No, outside. On a cave or on the top of the house. I don't remember the name. You know the room where you put all your boxes? On the top of the house, oh, in the with lot. a lot of dust. In the yes. lot. Wow. So because it's very far and it's very hiding, you know, she can hide. But no, she has to put that in the center of her house. Wow. You know, surrounded by, I don't know, a nice golden key. And it's only her who has the power to open it. But a lot of women put that. No, no, I don't want to see it. I put that on a cave, very damp. Wow. Or on the loft, very dusty. Yeah. It doesn't belong to us. Because well, we don't see it, we, we don't know it. That says a lot, doesn't it? Just in pictures. I mean, yeah. I know about art therapy, but that's phenomenal. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. For me, the vulva is a door. Well, it's not from me. I read that a long time ago. I did a lot of workshop on that also. The door, you know, you just open the door and then you have the, the vagina, the corridors. What sort of corridor do you want to attract? Do you want a corridor where you have some tea and cookies? 
Or do you want a corridor very cold or a corridor full of cushion, very cozy? You create your own space. Mm. We can create by visualizing the space also. Very powerful. What I love is the fact that it can help people who have the problems. Another thing is really for people to connect to their bodies and maintain health to stop any problems or reduce the prospect of any problems. And again, as you were saying earlier about the men, a lot of people don't do anything until such time as, you know, the shit hits the fan or whatever, that with prostate, it's really important to honour their role because it is creating that balance because a lot of men have a tendency to, or society puts the pressure on men to be macho, which can yeah. cause an imbalance in itself, can't it? And also men wear a lot of trousers. They are very tight in their pelvic, more than us. Yeah. So, of course, the prostate is very tight. There is a lot of congestion in the prostate. So by just massaging the bladder, they can massage the prostate and it will avoid to get up during the night. This symptom that they can have during the night also, like us during menopause. As I say, I am not a doctor or a healer. I'm not here to save women. They save themselves. This auto-massage helps people really to take care of themselves. And by adding steaming, by adding castor oil pack when they have pain, it's a, a lot of things. By adding a good way of eating, by adding activities during the day, you know, it's not only one stuff, it's all of it. I would never say that I will be the saver. No, no. First, yeah. I don't save people. They save themselves. Yeah. But yeah, I put a seed on it because for me, it was incredible. Men need this calming hand, you know, they have the right to have this time also. But they don't give themselves the opportunity to take this time for themselves. Mm. There is steaming also for men. Pain is soaking. There is other stuff that I invite men to do. But of course, not all of them want to do that. But yes, a part of femininity that they need. Obviously, Rosita was a great influence. But has there been any other person or book that has influenced you in your life? It's a French book. Living into my uterus, because I am quite a young, four years old girl when I learn stuff. You know, I like images and I like to be very simple so I can explain to people in this way. And Habiter son uterus, it's uh, to live into your uterus. So she really compares the uterus, the pelvic floor as a house. So I love these books. And Samar, my teacher, is really my mentor. And I love her because I discover a lot about the energetic world also, about nature, plants also. Because during the massage, you have also all this plant energetic power that they have in the jungle. Wow. And regarding uh, Rosita Arvigo, that I don't know because she's an American who met this shaman in Belize, Don Elirio, and these two create this Arvigo massage. Ah. So Don Elirio did the front, and Rosita Arvigo was an American, a white American woman, and she took over the work of Don Elirio after many years. That's why the method's name is Arvigo massage with her name. Wow. Yeah, so it's a mix of naturopathy and uh, tribe uh, Maya abdominal uh, teaching. You can mix the old world tradition into our very modern life. So are there courses that people can learn to do it as well if they wanted to? Yeah, they can. Uh, Since uh, two years, Samar uh, Cyprian, who you can go to arvigotherapy.com. She teaches people to learn this massage. As a lover of words, do you have a favorite quote that inspires you? Yeah, it's always the same about the the one of Don Elirio Panti. The uterus is a woman's core. If it's out of balance, her whole life is out of balance, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. And it's true <laughs> for me. It's true. It's your mantra. Yeah, because, <laughs> because, because I could feel it, you know? Mm. Yeah. I love it. It's true because everything is there. And when I speak about uterus and I say that, all the women, they say, what? The uterus is very important. Yes, 
Fantastic, because no. I think inspirational quotes say a lot about ourselves and the way that we yeah. live our lives. So that doesn't surprise yeah. me. So obviously you're very balanced, but I'm sure because you're human like the rest of us, you get days when you feel in a funk. What do you do to help get yourself out of a funk? I'm going to be very direct, but I put my ass on the chair. I sit down, I close my eyes. And I really connect with her. So I put my hand on my uterus because I know where she is and my, and my heart. And I have a visualization that I do with golden light. So this is one method that I can do very quickly without my hand also if I stand up. And it's a lot about visualization. Yeah. And also I ground myself with a golden light from the center of the earth uh, through my sacrum with a golden light. And then I put this golden light into myself. And it explodes through my crown chakra like a fountain. I am just full of God and I am a queen. And then I know that I can do everything. You know, I have to visualize this goddess because for me, the goddess also was one of my vision. If I am a goddess, I can do everything. Very empowering. Very simple. (laughs) From one goddess to another, if I could grant you one wish in the world, what would it be and why? Oh, my wish is really to help women to meet their uterus, to meet the power of the uterus, to connect and to discover that it's them, their ID, their identity. They don't have to play a role. So if I could help them not to suffer too much, because we are so strong and we suffer a lot. So I cannot see that anymore. Well, I know I'm definitely going to have to have a one-on-one with yourself because it's um, so intriguing. (laughs) And everybody I came across, I I said, did you know? (laughs) And now we put it out on the airways and hopefully we can help empower a few more women to do that thing because I think it's really, really important. And it would help everybody rebalance, I think, which is much needed and take the pressure off and keep the foundation of ourselves. Yeah. And it's, again, it's not only gynecologist you know it's always it's abdominal so it can be diarrhea it can be digestive problem you know it's not only linked to woman issues the whole body is integrated so it's going to help on so many levels not just the pure gestational aspect of what the uterus can do because it serves so much yeah so you can do the, the massage on people who have something in their vagina RUD or Pesari, but they have to take it off because I can't move it. Okay, so this is important. And this is a massage also that you can only do when there is no blood, no menses or no infection. Excellent. But I teach the tool also when you have infection, you know, very simple tools to avoid this infection. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Delphine. It's been an absolute delight. Bless thank you, you Philippa. You're more than welcome. <laughs> thank you. Take care. Yeah, thank Bye. you. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Thank you. Delphine's enthusiasm is infectious, isn't it? I've got an appointment to discover the magic of the work she does next week, so I'll give you some feedback. Next week, I'll be talking to Glenn Hurrod from Happy Cow Milk, who's determined to democratise the dairy industry so farmers can earn the income they deserve from processing and distributing good milk produced from happy cows to their local community. Make sure you follow or subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out. All feedback and reviews are much appreciated, as are your suggestions for subjects or guests you'd like me to consider. Just email me on info at philiparos.com. So until next week, dig deep, open your mind to a world of possibilities, live life with a generous heart and take steps to minimise waste and maximise your own potential. (laughs) 